This is what you would get by adding this search algorithm to the different bots. These foundation models are world models of a kind and to do really creative. So ARC is intended as a kind of IQ test for machine intelligence. Has the AI community unknowingly crossed the AGI threshold? That's the question explored in a paper titled The Surprising Effectiveness of Test Time Training for Abstract Reasoning. This research, coming from MIT, promises to be an intriguing read as it delves into one of the most challenging benchmarks in AI. Many of you are already familiar with the GSM 8K GPQ benchmarks, but did you know there's a specific benchmark that, invented by Francis Soe, a senior staff engineer at Google best known for developing the Keras Deep Learning Library in 2015, this concept holds significant importance. Let's take a moment to see what he says about the ARAGI benchmark. When I reveal the results of this recent research, you'll quickly grasp why it's so impactful. What is the ARC benchmark and why do you even need this prize? Why won't the biggest LLM we have in a year be able to just saturate it? Sure. So ARC is intended as a kind of IQ test for machine intelligence. And what makes it different from uh, most LLM benchmarks out there is that it's designed to be resistant to memorization. So if you look at the way LLMs work, they are basically this uh, big interpolative memory. And the way you scale up their capabilities is by trying to cram as much uh, knowledge and patterns as possible into them. And uh, by contrast, uh, Arc does not require a lot of knowledge at all. It's designed to only require what's known as uh, core knowledge, which is uh, basic knowledge about things like uh, elementary physics, objectness, counting, that sort of thing. Um, the sort of knowledge that any four-year-old or five-year-old uh, possesses, right? Um, but what's interesting is that each puzzle in ARC is novel, is something that you've probably not encountered before, even if you've memorized the entire internet. And that's what, that's what makes it, <clears throat> sorry, that's what uh, makes, makes ARC challenging for LLMs. And so far, LLMs have not uh, been doing very well on it. In fact, the approaches that are working well uh, are more towards uh, discrete program search. To summarize what Francis C.H. explained, he introduced a new benchmark called ARC, which differs significantly from traditional benchmarks. Unlike conventional tests that large language models, LLMs, can excel in, especially if they've encountered similar questions before, this benchmark is unique. It's designed to test reasoning and understanding without prior training for the specific questions. Humans typically perform at around 85% on this test, but LLMs struggle noticeably in comparison. For those curious about how this test works, here's a quick overview. The structure is fairly straightforward. You'll notice that some sections have holes, and in these examples, the yellow areas are filled in. In one instance, there's an object with a hole in the center, and again, the yellow fills that space. This pattern continues consistently. Each area that requires filling is marked in yellow. Now, large language models, LLMs, often struggle with tests like these. Why? Because they haven't encountered them before. When it comes to reasoning through unfamiliar problems, LLMs face challenges. This is known as the issue of out-of-distribution tasks, where models struggle with situations beyond their training data. To achieve Artificial General Intelligence, AGI, we need systems that excel at these tests. Success here implies that they can handle novel, unseen problems, making them far more reliable across various industries and applications. This research, highlighted by a study from MIT titled The Surprising Effectiveness of Test Time Training for Abstract Reasoning, explores how language models perform when faced with novel challenges. While these models excel within their training data, they often struggle with problems requiring complex reasoning outside that scope. The study investigates test time training, a method where model parameters are updated temporarily during inference using a loss derived from the input data. Essentially, this technique allows the model to adjust on the fly, boosting its reasoning capabilities. Remarkably, the results show significant improvements. In fact, the model's performance surpassed human-level reasoning on benchmarks where large language models, LLMs, have traditionally struggled. This breakthrough marks the first time LLMs have excelled in such areas, demonstrating the potential of adaptive learning during inference. This is an example of the training and test data used in the study. I'll keep it brief, 
Essentially, they employed a search method to explore possible solutions to a problem. One technique involved flipping the model vertically, horizontally, and even leaving one element out. For instance, if predicting the next number in the sequence 2, 4, 6, which is of course 8, they examined predictions like this. What comes before 4 and Aru? The answer is 2. What comes between 2 and 6? The answer is 4. They used various combinations to predict the next outcome, creating a variation of their search algorithm that explored multiple possibilities. After generating these predictions, they applied a hierarchical voting method. First, transformation voting was used, followed by global voting, to identify the most consistent and likely correct answer. Self-consistency played a key role, ensuring the chosen answer appeared most frequently across transformed inputs. This process resembled a search for agreement or consistency across the outputs. You might wonder, what were the results of this study? The fascinating thing about this development, and why some people are sounding the alarm, is the gradual way we've approached AI. It's like the analogy of the frog in boiling water. If you drop a frog into boiling water, it will immediately jump out. But if you place it in water that's slowly heating up, it won't notice the danger until it's too late. Many believe that's exactly what's happening with AI today. They point to the fact that these models have now achieved a public validation accuracy of 61.9%, matching the average human score. This is significant because it suggests that explicit symbolic search may not be the only path to improving abstract reasoning in AI systems. What's truly remarkable is that this achievement represents state-of-the-art progress. For the first time, we're seeing AI reach human-level performance in a key benchmark designed to evaluate abstract reasoning, a metric some use to gauge progress toward AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. However, there's debate. Critics argue that this test alone doesn't prove we've reached AGI. OpenAI, for example, defines AGI differently, suggesting that passing such a test may not be sufficient to declare true AGI. AGI, or artificial general intelligence, refers to an autonomous system capable of outperforming humans in most economically valuable tasks. While various definitions exist, the consensus is that refining current methods and applying them to different models could significantly enhance accuracy and efficiency. This improvement can then be translated into practical, valuable work. What's particularly fascinating is that these advancements suggest a clearer path to achieving AGI. Many developments we've observed recently begin to align with this trajectory, making the concept feel more tangible. Let me explain further. One thing many people are familiar with by now is the concept of the O1 paradigm. This idea has gained attention because OpenAI's models seem to align with it. These models perform searches during inference time. But here's the fascinating part. We don't fully understand what OpenAI's models are doing during inference. The reasoning processes these models use are hidden from us to protect their proprietary methods. However, what we do know is that as you allocate more compute time during testing, the models demonstrate improved performance. In other words, allowing the model to think longer results in better benchmark scores and enhanced reasoning abilities. This paper demonstrated a six-fold improvement using only an 8B parameter LLM. What's truly fascinating about this paradigm is what it reveals about the data we've already known regarding AI. Remember AlphaGo? Think back to what its creators were saying about the future of large language models, LLMs, just a year ago. It's remarkable how far we've come in such a short time. I, I, th I think that's on the right track. I think there is a, these foundation models are world models of a kind. And to do really creative um, problem solving, you need to start searching. So if I think about something like AlphaGo and the Move 37, the famous Move 37, where did that come from? Did that come from all its data that it's seen of human games or something like that? No, it didn't. It came from it identifying a move as being quite unlikely, but you know, possible, and then via a process of search, coming to understand that the that was actually a very very good move. So you need to you to get real creativity. You need to search through spaces of possibilities and find these sort of hidden gems. That's what creativity is. I think current language models they don't really do that kind of a thing. They really are 
mimicking the data. They are mimicking all the human ingenuity and everything which they have seen from all this data that's coming from the internet that's originally derived from humans. If you want a system that can go be re truly beyond that and not just generalize in novel ways, so it can, you know, these models can blend things. They can do, you know, Harry Potter in the style of a Kanye West rap or something, yeah. even though it's never happened. They can blend things together. Right. But to do something that's truly creative that, that is not just a blending of existing things, that requires searching through a space of possibilities and finding these hidden gems that, that, are, that are sort of the hidden away in there somewhere. And that requires search. So I don't think we'll see systems that truly step beyond their training data until we have powerful search in the process. That's truly remarkable because it's precisely what, today, we're observing something intriguing with zero-shot learning especially regarding the surprising effectiveness of test time training for abstract reasoning. This type of reasoning is often considered a benchmark where large language models, LLMs, traditionally fall short. However, it's evident that employing advanced search methods and techniques significantly enhances performance, pushing the benchmark to new heights. As Shane Legg highlights, these advancements are reshaping our understanding of LLM capabilities. Google DeepMind wasn't the only one to talk about this. If you're curious, someone else also weighed in. We have insights from individuals who worked directly on the O1 model. They shared fascinating details about a previous project called Hanabi. They explained how a drastic performance boost left them in disbelief, an outcome that was directly tied to the search process. This is what you would get by adding this search algorithm to the different bots. So if you take this handcrafted heuristic bot, that was only getting 28%, and then added the simplest search imaginable, where you just like, you know, do a bunch of rollouts for all the different actions you, you could take, and then pick the one that had the highest expected value. That would boost your performance to nearly 60%, which was beating all the previous deep RL bots just out of the box. This was using like a single CPU core at test time uh, for like a second. And the beautiful thing was that you could actually add this on top of all the other deep RL bots. So if you added it to like the latest and greatest bot, uh, deep RL bot, you would boost the performance even further to uh, around 72%. And then if you did this, this was only if you did search for a single player. So if you did it for both players, that's the green bars, and you can see the performance went up even more. Um, now I should also point out that the point, uh, the, the upper bound for this game is not 100% because there are some, ver there are some like deal outs that you just cannot win. So really the top performance is possible is like, I think uh, maybe 90%. Um, and so you can see like we're, we're quickly saturating um, performance in this domain. Now. When my teammates and I at FAIR um, got this result, my, my teammate literally thought it was a bug because it was just unimaginable that you do this like simple thing and the performance jumps up from like 28% to state-of-the-art 58%. This is why there's a clear trend emerging. It seems we're moving toward a future where both test time and train time computation will play key roles in enabling large language models, LLMs, and AI systems. No matter what mechanism they choose for their search processes, since there are various methods to search with AI, it's becoming clear that this will be the next big step for many future systems. It will help unlock advanced reasoning abilities and allow the performance of tasks outside the distribution of typical data. What's fascinating here is the role of search. It's truly remarkable and it made me think, when we compare how humans process information, 